Hello, welcome to another video. This video is going to be my summer TBR. These are books that I would like to get around to reading in the summer because I simply feel like they'll fit the vibes, maybe? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine as to why I'm picking them up. Some of them, it literally just says like, oh, great for the summer. So I'm like, okay, sure, why not? We're gonna start off with My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Uh, I've been meaning to read this one for a while. I've been reading a few Grady Hendrix books. Read one that I really liked, another one one. Didn't like it as much, but I think it's probably because it just had a specific element to it that's not my favorite. So My Best Friend's Exorcism, it's kind of straightforward, but it literally says like, I guess some newspaper or article review place put, this book packs all the magic of a summer horror flick. So I was like, perfect. It says, High school sophomores Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade, but after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act different. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches its terrifying conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Yeah, so I am pretty excited to pick this up in the summer. I don't know when, but I will pick it up. The next two books that I plan to read, they were gifted to me by amazing people, so I simply put them on the TBR because I was like, I have to read them. These were gifted to me, I have to read them. And I even still have the little paper, you know, the little note that comes with it. So this is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jim, Jim, Jimenez? I think it's Jimenez. This is a standalone fantasy and I am quite excited. I have heard that it is pretty brutal, pretty gory, pretty graphic. I don't think, I haven't seen very much of it. So let's read the inside. The people suffer under the centuries-long rule of the Moon Throne. The royal family, the despotic emperor and his monstrous sons, the Three Terrors, hold the countryside in their choking grip. They bleed the land and oppress the citizens with the frightful powers they inherited from the good from the god locked under their palace. But that god cannot be contained forever. With the aid of June, a guard broken by his guilt-stricken past, and Kima, an outcast fighting for his future, the god escapes from her royal captivity and flees from her own children, the triplet terrors who would drag her back to her unholy prison. And so it is that she embarks with her young companions on a five-day pilgrimage in search of freedom and a way to end the moon throne forever. The journey ahead will be more dangerous than any of them could have imagined. Both a sweeping adventure story and an intimate exploration of identity, legacy, and belonging the Spear cut through, Cuts Through Water is an ambitious and profound saga that will transport and transform you and is like nothing you've ever read before. It does sound very, very interesting and I'm pretty excited to read it. I love this cover. It's so freaking cool. Next book is Sundial by Catriona Ward. This was sent to me by Lorena. Oh, I forgot to say too, uh, The Spear Cuts Through Water was sent to me by Sam. Thank you so much, Sam. This one was sent to me by Lorena. She sent it to me because she was like, I heard that you really liked um, the house at the end of the street or whatever. What was that? Was that what it was called? The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. And she's like, I saw you had this on your wish list. So I was like, you know what? Might as well give her a book by an author that she really likes. And I'm so glad that you did because I really, really have been wanting to read more by Catriona Ward, so now I'll just do that this summer. Sundial is... You can't escape what's in your blood. All Rob wanted was a normal life. She almost got it too. A husband, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs. But Rob fears for her oldest daughter, Callie, who collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends. Rob sees a darkness in Callie, one that reminds her too much of the family she left behind. She decides to take Callie back to her childhood home, to Sundial, deep in the Mojave Desert, and there she will have to make a terrible choice. Callie is worried about her mother. Rob has begun to look at her strangely and speaks of past secrets. Callie fears that only one of them will leave Sundial alive. The mother and daughter embark on a dark desert journey to the past in the hopes of redeeming their future. Sharp as a snake bite, Sundial is a thrilling new novel from the internationally best-selling author of The Last House on Needless Street. 
Woo. Yeah, this one sounds terrifying. Ooh, those mother-daughter relationships, man. They're strained. They're strained, people. Next book. I got this one a while back and I really need to get around to it. So I was like, fuck it. I'm putting it in this TBR and I'm gonna get around to it. And that is Kai Kei by Vaishnavi Patel. I think it's Vaishnavi. I hope I'm saying that right. So begins Kai Kei's story. The only daughter of the kingdom of Kakaya. She is raised on tales of the gods. How they churned the vast sea vast ocean to obtain the nectar of immortality, how they vanquish evil and ensure the land of Barat prospers, how they offer powerful boons to the worthy. Yet she watches as her father unceremoniously banishes her mother, listens as her own worth is reduced to the marriage alliance she can secure, and when she calls upon the gods for help, they never seem to hear. Desperate for independence, she turns to the texts she once read with her mother and discovers a magic that is hers alone. With it, Kaikei transforms herself from an overlooked princess into a warrior, diplomat, and most favored queen. But as the evil from her childhood stories threatens the cosmic order, the path she has forged clashes with the destiny the gods have chosen for her family, and Kaikei must decide if resistance is worth the destruction it will wreak and what legacy she intends to leave behind. It sounds like it's going to be very, you know, women have it rough. And this is how much we got to work to get what we want, girl. <sighs> if you know what I'm saying. No, <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> It's so long. I hope I've heard that it's good. I'm really praying it is. I saw, uh, what's her face? Elliot Brooks say that it was really good. And so far, Elliot Brooks and I seem to have kind of the same opinions on books. Like I, I whatever, I'm not gonna go into that. All right, next book. I, I don't know if you can tell, a lot of these books are either really dark and gruesome or they're set in deserts or both. <laughs> the next book is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. So I had never read anything by S.A. Chakraborty before. I didn't intend to read anything before this one. I was gonna try this one as my first one by her because this is, I believe it was her debut, but I did end up reading The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi, which is by S.A. Chakraborty, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I don't think it was great, but I thought it was good. I really liked it. So now I'm gonna read this one, which says, On the streets of 18th century Cairo, Nari is a con woman of unsurpassed skill. She makes her living swindling Ottoman nobles, hoping to one day earn enough to change her fortunes. But when Nari accidentally summons Dara, an equally sly, darkly mysterious djinn warrior, during one of her cons, she learns that even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. Forced to flee Cairo, Dara and Nari journey together across hot, windswept sands, teeming with creatures of fire and rivers where the mythical marids sleep, past ruins of once magnificent human metro metropolises, and mountains where the circling birds of prey are more than what they seem to Devabad, the legendary city of brass. It's a city steeped in magic and fire, where blood can be as dangerous as any spell, a city where old resentments run deep and the royal court rules with a tenuous grip, a city to which Nari is irrevocably bound and where her very presence threatens to ignite a war that has been simmering for centuries. This just sounds so cool. It sounds like it's gonna be full of mythology and different creatures and I'm so excited and it's all gonna be in like a desert setting, which I think is gonna be great for the summertime. So I'm very excited. And if I like this one, then I will try and complete the rest of the trilogy in the summer as well. So, but that all depends on if I do like the first book, then at that point, I'll probably continue with the trilogy. Next book is A Master of Jin by P. DeJelly Clark. Uh, I've had this on my shelf for a long time. Uh, I've had a few I've seen a few people say they really liked it, and then I've seen a few people just kind of have a meh opinion on it. I also have not really seen it around very much anymore. I think that whatever hype it had, whatever praise a lot of people were having, because books will go through YouTube like they go through a shredder. Like, oh my god, it's so great, and now I don't need it anymore. So... I think that's what happened to this book. <laughs> Anyways, this one says, it's another one set in Cairo. Cairo, 1918. Though Fatma El Sharawi? El Sharawi? I think it's Sharawi. Let's, let's try that again. Though Fatma El Sharawi is the youngest woman working for the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities, she's certainly not a rookie especially after preventing the destruction of the universe last summer. 
Well, good job. Good on her. I'm sorry. The book was right there. I'm not, I'm sitting very poor. I'm sitting on the floor and I've been recording for so freaking long. My back hurts. So when someone murders the members of a secret brotherhood dedicated to one of the most famous men in history, Al Jahiz, and an agent Fatima is called to the case. Al Jahiz transformed the world 40 years ago when he opened up the veil between the magical and mundane realms before vanishing into the unknown. This murderer claims to be Al Jahiz, returned to con condemn the modern age for its social oppressions. His dangerous magical abilities instigate unrest in the streets of Cairo that threatens to spill onto the global stage. Alongside her ministry colleagues and a familiar face from her past, Agent Fatima must unravel the mystery behind this imposter to restore peace to the city or face the possibility he could be exactly who he seems. I think this is probably like a fantasy mystery. It also, I feel like there's going to be like steampunk vibes to it just because the gears that I'm seeing on the cover and it says like it's an age of uh, not prosperity, invention, I don't know, whatever. All right, last book. Holy shit, my legs are starting to hurt. My butt is sore. Let's go. The last book, this one is uh, one of my five star predictions, which is The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buhlman. Kinsh Na Shanak. I'm so tired of these really hard names to say. Can we just call him Bob? <laughs> Kinch Nishanak owes the Takers Guild a small fortune for his education as a thief, which includes, but is not limited to, lockpicking, knife fighting, wall scaling, fall breaking, lie weaving, and trap making plus a few other small magics. His debt has driven him to lie in wait by the old forest road, planning to rob the next traveler who crosses his path. But today, Kinch Nishanak has picked the wrong mark. Galva is a knight, a survivor of the brutal goblin wars, and handmaiden of the goddess of death. God damn, you really picked the wrong mark. She is searching for her queen, missing since a distant northern city fell to giants. Unsuccessful in his robbery, and lucky to escape with his life, Kinch now finds his fate entangled with Galva's. Common enemies and uncommon dangers force thief and knight on an epic journey where goblins hunger for human flesh, krakens hunt in dark waters, and honor is luxury few can afford. I am really excited for this one. I feel like it's gonna be so much fun. It just sounds like the kind of like, oh shit, I fucked up. Ah, damn it. Now I'm stuck here. <laughs> like, that's what it sounds like. And I'm very excited for it. Again, all these mythological creatures, magic, supernatural things going on. Oh, I'm so excited for summer. My TBR sounds amazing. Let us all pray to all the gods of the summer and the sun that my books will be good. That's what I hope anyways. <laughs> So yes, and I'm hoping to vlog my experience reading these books. I will most likely pick up other books here and there throughout the months, throughout the summer. Uh, these are just books that I really, really, really want to focus on reading for the season. So please let me know if there are any books that you are very excited to get to in this summer season, especially if, I don't know, maybe you're off school, if you're in college or high school or whatever. I don't know. You probably shouldn't be in high school if you're watching my videos. I didn't swear too much in this video, did I? I don't know. Or if you're a teacher and you're also off for the summer, I technically am a teacher and I'm not really going to be off in the summer, but I am going to be trying to go part-time. That's a whole other story y'all don't need to know about. But yes, let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know what you plan on reading. And thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this video, but that's really all up to you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!